So uh, the question what you asked on the security part is very, very important. And it is uh, so much important in everyday's uh, life and uh, manufacturing has uh, become too much important uh, to be uh, spoken about. I'll give you uh, a practical example. And, uh, you know, in a life, uh, uh, in a day, daily uh, activity types, I'm a runner. I run on daily basis, uh, on daily, uh, and uh, I have enrolled myself into a challenge, which is 100 days continuously. Up, I'm supposed to be running uh, certain kilometers, and this uh, running is recorded in Garmin watch, and which is the data automatically goes to the cloud. Now, a uh, couple of years back, in this challenge, uh, 10 days Garmin. Uh, services were not available because somebody hacked into the server. And because of that, we could not post the data or uh, the data could not be taken by Garmin. And all the participants there, they didn't know where they stand in the program. And just imagine, similar thing happens in the manufacturing setup. Today, we are on a data-driven uh, environment. And every decision is taken based on the data available. And today we are in the world of ML and AI, where data is collected and the data collected is referred for any decision making. Just imagine you have not taken the required security measures and you are not able to get a decision based on what you captured or what you are supposed to act on. And your production is going to be held up and your uh, any production loss is going to affect the company in the market as well as the product which is being uh, produced and coming out of the system so the data the security becomes very important here and uh, so much so is that the uh, solution what we give in traceability we collect data and giving the data to our customers in a meaningful form where the customers can use the data for preventive and any predictive measures. If they are not able to get this information from the data, what they collected and whatever effort they are taking, and it's going to be futile. So uh, the security becomes very important here. Now, coming to Zebra, and Zebra has understood this very well. So they do have a tool called LifeGuard for their mob mobile computers including tabs. Now this lifeguard helps the customers to be uh, you know, updated on the patches available, made available by uh, the uh, company as well as the OS, uh, uh, OS developers. So this helps Zebra to see that the, their customers data, what they are collecting using their devices are secured enough and not uh, played with uh, by anybody else. If you look at uh, today's uh, market and the business environment, what is spoken about? People talk about reliability, sustainability, responsibility, and uh, people do uh, uh, worry, uh, very much worried about the supply chain. Now, there are multiple other points like this. Let me talk about uh, sustainability. I'm sure, uh, I mean, we all are aware that the Fortune 500 companies, which was in 1970s, and 85% of those companies are not today in the list. And uh, the uh, usually uh, any company's life cycle is to be 35 years plus. But today, if you look at it, the life cycle of any companies, uh, any Fortune 500 companies are 18 years plus. Now, why? Now, you today we are in the startup world. And now uh, we also know that any startup which is coming, 80% uh, of the startups doesn't see the uh, end of tunnel. Now, sustainability becomes very important here. When you start something, you are able to sustain the success for longer time. Now, the, the success can be sustained for longer time only when you innovate or uh, do some activity 
and where you excel in those activity and which helps you to stay in the market for long. Now, one of uh, such uh, thing is and stay up to the up to date with the technology, which is helping the organization to stay live and they don't go back like uh, they don't have the Kodak moments or Nokia moments. So all these companies were in their prime when they uh, were in the market, but somehow they stayed where they were and they could not uh, live with uh, others or uh, stay in the market for longer time. Now, if you look at uh, another area, which is supply chain. Now, supply chain visibility becomes very important. Now, you may be good in manufacturing, you may be having a quality product, but all this is not available in the market or people do not know the uh, product, what they want is available here or there. How will you going to, how are you going to uh, sell or uh, liquidate the product what you have already manufactured? Now, copy that into e-com sector. Now, e-com sector, they thrive only on speed of delivery and making customers to come to them with the belief that what is ordered there and what is committed by Amazon or any e-com company is delivered as per their commitment. So any customer being, uh, I mean, be it you or me, when we order something, we always go and track what is ordered is where it is. And we want to see our product is the uh, movement of our product from their warehouse to our place. So the visibility, what I'm talking about is in a, a layman language for uh, any uh, common man. Now you put that into a manufacturing or a, a manufacturing company where they need to know what is ordered is coming so that they are able to uh, meet the production uh, target or uh, the market demand. And without this visibility, they'll be nowhere. So su supply chain visibility becomes very important in today's date. Now, we are talking about supply chain visibility. We are talking about uh, sustainability. All that is a transformation, what we are doing from where we were few decades. Now, all this transformation, how it is happening, what is helping? Digitalization and digitization is helping us. And there is a difference between digitization and digitalization. And Zebra and CodeNext helps in both. Now, digitization, what you do repeatedly using pen and paper is digitized so that you don't need to repeatedly uh, repeat a data entry. And in digitalization, what we are doing, we are helping the organization to collect data by transforming your all mechanical process into a digital uh, way and collecting the data and making uh, it available for you to take a data-driven decisions. So uh, this becomes very important here. Now, though we are saying supply chain, sustainability, digitalization, and digitization, what who does all this is the talent. So holding the talent becomes very important. And the talent available for these activities are very, very less or uh, very uh, scatterly available. So the talent management and workforce uh, management becomes very important nowadays. Now, all this is coming to, into uh, one, one area which is compliance and regulatory compliance. Now, governments in uh, every country is also not uh, sleeping. They also want to see that you now the, uh, their commitment, their uh, uh, <clears throat> electoral uh, uh, commitment and all uh, is met uh, for the, each and every uh, country. And they do come up with uh, quality uh, life statements. So they want their people to live uh, and eat, uh, stay healthy. And they do come up with lots of regulatory complaints. For example, pharma. Now, US FDA has come up with lots of compliances where people have to see that uh, the product what is produced is complied with all the uh, regulatory information uh, and so on. Now, uh, again, I can give an example here. During COVID time, we had lots of counterfeit products. And this is understood by every government and uh, they have come up with uh, lots of regulatory complaints here and people have to go in for QR code based uh, confirmation where what is produced needs to be uploaded in the government portal and government has to confirm 
yes, what has come in is probably the right uh, product or wrong product. So this uh, compliance also becomes very important. In all this area, be it uh, digitalization or digitization or uh, uh, compliance, all this area, Zebra plays a major role by giving uh, uh, product and solutions. And uh, CodeNext has uh, solutions, software solutions, where, where we have helped many customers to meet, the, uh, meet these demands of the market. You know, uh, there is a FMCG major in our country. Uh, they're, 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 uh, if I'm right, I think uh, they are a six billion uh, turnover uh, organization. We understand 4% uh, of their uh, market uh, is counterfeited. Their products are counterfeited in the market. Now, 4% in six billion is quite a lot of money. It, not only, it is not only money, it is also killing their brand. Now, just imagine this, uh, they, with, uh, they go with uh, some solution which helps them to reduce the counterfeit. You cannot completely eliminate and as you become smart, uh, smarter and the other person also becomes smarter than you. So you would not be completely in a position to eliminate, but you cannot reduce the counterfeit uh, to a greater extent. So uh, one is that, and they want to see that you no know, brand protection is very important. Second is uh, they they are also uh, you know responsible company to see that you now uh, customers who are buying their products get the genuine one, not the counterfeited one. And uh, some of the products are uh, related to health, and so the buyer doesn't uh, get uh, uh, I mean affected by counterfeited uh, product. So it's very important. This is on the uh, health side of it. But there are uh, other uh, areas like, you know, uh, you have uh, auto ancillaries, you have electrical uh, items, you have paints, uh, you have some chemicals uh, and other products where, uh, uh, you, I mean, uh, electrical contractors or auto oil companies, which is buying these products, wants to give, uh, wants to see that their customers are getting a, quality genuine product. Now, uh, I, I know an electrical company uh, which is uh, manufacturing uh, bulbs. They used to get uh, a warranty claim uh, which with a fake product. Uh, they understood though it is a fake product but they couldn't prove uh, or uh, confirm it to their uh, electrical contract as the product what they are coming up uh, for a claim. Warranty claims are all not uh, produced by them. It is produced by someone. So, uh, 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 CodeNext with uh, CodeNext gave a solution with Zebra Products, whereby uh, we had uh, every LED bulb going with a QR code, and uh, customer could validate uh, whenever the warranty claim came back. Uh, customer could uh, validate with a QR code whether the product is produced by them uh, or no. And this way they saved few millions uh, by, uh, they saved few millions. So tracking product and traceability becomes very important here. So, um, so far, what I spoke about was a product traceability. Now, you, we also look at uh, asset traceability, which is very important. Uh, when I say asset traceability, people are asset. Uh, some uh, machines are asset and some carriers are asset. Now, I'm just, when I'm saying and carriers are an asset, uh, the carrier could be a vehicle or it could be a, a pallet or it could be a crates. Now, let us talk about crates. Uh, in an e-com company, uh, every crate is an asset. Why? Because it's reused. And it is reused for many months or years. Sometimes it is years also. Now, the uh, the crates are the carrier of the goods what is supposed to be going to a, either their own retail shops or it is going to the customers where they want to deliver uh, products. Yeah. Uh, now, these crates are supposed to be coming back. Now, I know a company uh, 
uh, where we have given a solution where they used to be buying uh, crates and pallets uh, every year. But the, they also looked at uh, is the business going proportionately uh, according to what they are purchasing. Then the business was not going. Though they were growing, but the business was not growing uh, according to what they were buying or the pallets and the uh, crates, what they were buying is not, uh, usage was not to a great level. So they uh, somebody understood this in their organization and they wanted to uh, have a solution uh, whereby they wanted to see that how well the assets are used. Uh, so we came up uh, with some solution uh, based on RFID and uh, some locationing uh, solution. And uh, everyone knows that Zebra has a locationing solution. And uh, we have given this uh, RF, uh, RFID based solution whereby customer is able to locate uh, where the pallets are there based on the in and outs and uh, using locationing system they are also in a position to identify uh, the pallets which is not used on some corner of the warehouse and uh, they uh, bring back uh, those uh, assets back in usage so that way they have produced in fact uh, i know a company where they have not procured uh, any pallets on that one year uh, and they saved a lot of money in doing that. So uh, asset visibility also becomes very important and what is helping you is that locationing system and RFID to a greater extent it helps you. This is my favorite, uh, favorite subject with the customers. Whenever I go to customer, my customer will always come and say that, hey, your solution is good and the products of Zebra is excellent and we want to go in for it, no doubt about it, but you are too costly. So my answer always used to be, I always ask them, costly in comparison to what? They have no answer. Why they, know, they do not have an answer is, they always look at the cost before the outcome. So I, if you remember, I was talking to you about an FMCG major who is having a 4% of their product counterfeited and which is almost uh, 2.4 million we, uh, uh, USD we are talking about. And the solution and the product what we are implementing in one year or that year will not even cost them 2.4 million dollar. It will be peanuts compared to uh, the money what they are losing and the brand the image what they are uh, what is getting uh, affected and if they look at that the money what they would be investing in the year one is actually going to give them returns on year two year three year four year five so that way if you see it and uh, it's not a major thing but generally what happens people people look at the cost before the outcome so if they really look at the outcome what they what is what they are going to get out of investing this money, I don't see uh, anybody who is going to have two minds uh, to go in for it. So my uh, always I tell my customers, please look at the outcome, do not look at the cost. One is that. And second is, yes, they need to have a trustable partner and a product to implement, execute and support them. If these two are there, I think uh, it's a no-brainer that they should go in for it because they've already identified the problem. After identifying the problem, I, I think uh, they should not stop. 